the the sanctions, the evading sanctions, is a natural extension of the types of tactics, techniques, procedures that Maduro regime has been using to launder money, make money, gold, whether it's gold, diamonds, uh, agriculture, the business uh, enterprises uh, that they buy, they use to buy off the military loyalty and keep themselves in power. So uh, the same types of, of uh, interrelated uh, evasion tactics, that, that's what they're using, second countries, second, third countries, and uh, front companies, uh, cryptocurrency, uh, money laundering. And so the key to putting more pressure on is in the financial realm, and getting in after the money flows and, and we're working that space hard, but it's a, it's a complicated space to, to work in. It's DOD supported and we're supporting uh, our, our colleagues across the interagency and international partners with the increased intelligence sharing. So passing what we know about all the illicit activities, including the sanctions of Asians are very important and where, where we can, uh, and where we want to, we we put that out through our diplomats in the in the public space uh, to call out the what Maduro's doing with the complicity of international actors to mortgage the future of not just Venezuela but the hemisphere. So those that strain is being felt across the hemisphere, and uh, and we see it. We see it with the uh, the um, what it's done to the economies pre-COVID, and it will only accelerate that trends as we move forward. So. It's a, it's a great question. Uh, it, it all points back to this larger web, this vicious circle, and, uh, and the key going forward is, um, is how we can better in, uh, share intelligence and then how the international community can better leverage that to uh, force and change the behavior of Maduro and the external state actors. That's enough the urgency of the threat. I think every speaker here today has, uh, has uh, pressed that. Uh, this threat uh, to democracy, the threat to uh, economic stability, add COVID, and I think we'll see second and third order impacts that have uh, me deeply troubled in terms of uh, undermining stability of other nation states. And so the driver of that threat has, has coalesced uh, people to work together against it. Uh, the 22 nations is one example you cite. I think as we look at this, and we look at important investments that we've made as a nation um, in the past. The you know, U.S. Colombian Action Plan uh, is still moving forward where Colombians are training partners across Central America uh, to conduct uh, operations against narco-trafficking and terrorists. Uh, it, it's extremely beneficial. We look at the uh, Central America Security Initiative, the Caribbean Security Initiative. These are important investments uh, where the United States time and financial resources will pay forward for enhanced stability. And that's part of the solution set here is making sure we have it right in those state, those, those investment areas to keep uh, the democracies that have made progress in Central America and South America and the Caribbean, keep them moving forward against this vicious uh, circle of threats, this network that uh, Doug so aptly uh, characterized.